time for our family scripture study. We finished up the testimonies of the witnesses and the introduction. And we, have, uh -huh. and we are now starting the actual record of the book of Mary. that Joseph Smith translated, and it starts with the book of 1 Nephi, the uh, first prophet we have in the book of Mormon Nephi, and he does a little intro at the beginning of his book, and I'll read it. First book of Nephi, his reign and ministry, an account of Lehi and his wife Sarah, and his four sons being called beginning at the eldest, Laman, Lemuel, Sam, and Nephi. The Lord warns Lehi to depart out of the land of Jerusalem, because he prophesieth unto the people concerning their iniquity, and they seek to destroy his life. He taketh three days' journey into the wilderness with his family. Lehi taketh his brethren and returneth to the land of Jerusalem after the record of the Jews, with the plates of brass in the top of them. The account of their sufferings. They take the daughters of Ishmael to wife. They take their families and depart into the wilderness. Their sufferings and afflictions in the wilderness, the course of their travels. They come to the large waters. Nephi's brother rebelled against, against him. He confounded them and buildeth a ship. They call the name of the place Bountiful. They cross the large waters into the promised land, and so forth. This is according to the account of Nephi, or in other words, I, Nephi, wrote this record. Chapter 1. I, Nephi, having been born of goodly parents, therefore I was taught somewhat in all the learning of my father, and having seen many afflictions in the course of my day, nevertheless, having been highly favored of the Lord in all my days, yea, having had a great knowledge of the goodness and the mysteries of God, Therefore, I make a, re a record of my proceedings in my days. What did you guys learn for the first one? <laughs> that his parents taught him about the goodness and mysteries of God. What does that mean? That Nephi got taught well. And that we should be taught well by our parents, too. Okay. And what, did what, kind, of parents, what kind of parents did he have? How did he describe, from parents. How did he describe Good new parents, right? And what did they teach him? And just... Very good. Mm -hmm. Daily verse 2. Yea, I make a record in the language of my father, which consists of the learning of the Jews and the language of the Jews. So what language was he speaking and writing in? Jewish and Egyptian language, kind of a mixture of the two. Verse 3. And I know that the record which I make is true, and I make it with my own hand, and I make it according to my knowledge. For it came to pass in the commencement of the first year of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, my father Lehi, having dwelt at Jerusalem in all his days, and in that same year there came many prophets prophesying unto the people that they must repent, for the great city Jerusalem must be destroyed. Who were some of the prophets preaching to Jerusalem about its destruction? Lehi. Lehi, like we're learning here. Who else? Who were some of the prophets who lived in Jerusalem we read about? What do we read about them? No, the New Testament. Incorrect. The Old Testament. The Old Testament. And who were some of those prophets? Uh, in the year of Zedekiah, that's about 600 years before Christ. Isaiah. Isaiah was about 750 years. He was one of those prophets talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. Who else? Probably his name is just J. Jared. Nope. What? Jeremiah. <laughs> Uh, listening to that still small voice, huh, Haley? Of her <laughs> goodly mother. That's right. Uh, so Isaiah, Jeremiah, these were some of the prophets who were preaching to the people. And Lehi was also one of those prophets preaching in Jerusalem. And what were they telling them to do? What were they telling the people to do? 
Nope. Many should perish by the sword, and many should be carried away captive into Babylon, 
So are we going to get good news about the city of Jerusalem? Yes, no. Uh, because of their wickedness, uh, they would be destroyed if they didn't repent. 14. And it came to pass that when my father had led the scene of many great and marvelous things, he did not explain. What did he say? Oh, he did explain many things unto the Lord, such as great and marvelous, O thy works, O Lord God Almighty. Thy throne is high in the heavens, and thy power and goodness and mercy are over all the inhabitants of the earth. And because thou art merciful, thou wilt not suffer those who come unto thee that they shall perish. So, who the eye was learning that if people repent, what can happen? That they could be forgiven. Yeah. Well, what does repent mean? What does that mean to repent? To be like, to be sorry for what we did and, and apologize and in prayer. Right. And then do what? And then go do it again. And then right. do it all over again. Try not to do it all over again. <laughs> but do what instead? What's this? So anytime we stop doing something that we probably shouldn't be doing, or if there's something we should be doing and we're not really doing it as much as we should, repentance is the process of changing from doing the bad thing or not doing that good thing to actually doing of the good things and kind of stopping those things that we shouldn't be doing. And anytime we make that change, that's an example of repentance. Very good. And, he said, and after this manner was the language of my father in the praise of his God, for his sword did rejoice, and his whole heart was filled, because of the things which he had seen, yea, which the Lord had shown unto him. So this was a very spiritual experience. Now my Nephi do not make a full account of the things which my father hath written, for he hath written many things which he saw in visions and in dreams. And he also hath written many things which he prophesied and spake unto his children, of which I shall not make a full account. But I shall make an account of my proceedings in my days. Behold, I make an abridgment of the record of my father upon plates which I have made with my own hands. Wherefore, after I have abridged the record of my father, then will I make an account of mine own life. So, what was Nephi doing? Writing about his dad and the teachings that his dad received. But who else apparently was doing some writing too? Nephi was. He kind of was keeping his own record of things. And Nephi did a summary of some of the things his dad wrote and also wrote down some of the revelations that he was receiving. And that's something we can do too. If there's ever something spiritual that happens, we can write it down and keep a record of spiritual things that happen for us as well, right? Can uh, we write down all the mistakes in the scripture? Absolutely. Yeah, whatever you want. Okay, where are we at? Take a journal. Verse 18. Therefore, I would that ye should know that after the Lord had shown so many marvelous things unto my father, he had, yea, concerning the destruction of Jerusalem. He told he went forth among the people and began to prophesy and to declare unto them concerning the things which he had both seen and heard. So, what did Nehemiah do after this vision? He went to tell the people. To what? Leave. Repent. If they repent, they will have to leave. They will have to leave Jerusalem. Would it be destroyed if they yeah, repented? But so if they didn't, then they would either run. The prophecies would be fulfilled. Yeah. That's the truth. Let's just say that. Yeah. Got the next verse. <laughs> Almost done. It's on again. And it came to pass that. The Jews did mock him because of the things which he testified of them. For he truly testified of their wickedness and their abominations. And he testified that the things which he saw and heard, and also the things which he read in the book, manifested plainly of the coming of the Messiah, and also of the redemption of the world. So, how did the people react? Um, no. Tell me, guys, teachers. <laughs> no! Thank you for 
doing what we want, right? Not what the Lord wants, kind of what we want. Yeah. When Isaiah went to the people of Jerusalem and told them to repent, what happened? They did what they wanted. They did what they wanted. When Jeremiah went to the people of Jerusalem and told them to repent, what happened? No. No. They kind of did what they want, right? Well, this was something they wanted them. to be back. So it shows how Heavenly Father gives people a lot of chances to, to repent and make good choices. And when the Jews heard these things, they were angry with him. Yea, even as with the prophets of old, when they cast out and stoned and slain. And they also sought his life that they might take it away. But behold, I, Nephi, will show unto you that the tender mercies of the Lord are over all those whom he hath chosen, because of their faith to make them mighty, even unto the power of deliverance. So what would be an example of a tender mercy? Blessings. Like what? What kind of blessing? Let's say you're going through something really hard, but you're trying to be faithful. When you're sick? Do what you can to make good choices. He helps you get through it. Might do something to help you get through it, right? Or if he doesn't necessarily take away the problem, he might just give you some comfort and support to help you get through the to problem. To help you get through it, right? So God doesn't always take away the problems. Kind of the challenges help us grow, but some of the tender mercies. He's helping us get through the problem. He's kind of giving us some peace of mind to cope better. It's funny because like, I posted something on Facebook for Relief Society when I was like sharing the testimony. I said, oh, the tender mercies when I was sharing the story that I shared. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's just these it's, it's just like these little moments where it's like Heavenly Father is like always looking out for us even when we feel so, yeah. like alone or like things are not going our way, but he'll like send you know, just something to be like, oh, Heavenly Father, you're you're you're, you're always there and you're always looking out for me. So the, I think those are like the tender mercies, like those little small things that sometimes may go unnoticed, but then when you really think about it, it's like, oh, it's Heavenly Father who was like there for me at that moment when I needed it. Um, I think anytime anyone turns to God and asks for help, God will guide them to some sort of help or truth or comfort if they have faith mm -hmm. to get that. Uh, what that might look like is going to vary. God knows what the tender mercies are that are best for each person. Um, but when we turn to Him in faith, that's when we can kind of receive those things. Right, Alyssa? Word. <laughs> All right, guys, nice job. We just finished the first chapter of the Book of Mormon. Way to go. First chapter. Turn on the notifications and check out the first video. And also leave the first two videos. Yeah, for two.